Welcome back to Crash and Eddie. It's February 19th. There's a ton going on. Wow, Bitcoin just passed 56. 56 to crash. What the devil? I don't know what's going on. It's impossible. <laughs> all I know is that the market cap, remember, you taught us all that mar the most important thing is market cap. And we are looking at a market cap right now it just hit 1.7 trillion dollars so my target for hitting 3 trillion by May 1st is well on its way yeah. this is proof this is proves how the, the corporate treasuries the uh, big money the whales they're, they're pumping money into this market right now. They know it's finally hit its maturity. They're forcing regulations. It's it's go time. Yeah, it's it's uh, and you know what? <clears throat> they're into Bitcoin already. This mm -hmm. is they've already moved on to the altcoins. I think. I think they got. I mean, the corporations still have to come in, and you got an ETF coming out. I guess that one in Canada just started having a great day. I guess that the Bitcoin ETF in Canada. Yeah, today, yeah, eighty right? eighty million dollars in the first hour. <laughs> this is it. It is. It's unbelievable, man. It's hard to even put into words. I've never seen. And you and I were both part of the dot com bubble, right? Oh this, yeah. This is this is. It's you can't even really compare it. I, it's it's and it's just getting going so yeah dwarfs a dot com dot com bubble right so quick market yeah bitcoin we're as we are doing this we're at an all-time high of 56 ethereum's 1963 binance is on fire right yeah what is up with that 315 you know so 317 i got there yeah right yeah. um what are you on live coin watch right yeah, what, yeah. what's driving that binance uh coin is that uh is that because they're also they also have that platform where they're where they're building building out other uh projects it's they i mean binance is interesting you know one thing they do is they do a quarterly burn Okay, so that's huge because you're reducing your coins uh, constantly. <clears throat> but the other thing is, the more you look around in crypto, it's kind of like Ripple in payments. It, when you look at the kind of the broad crypto space, every rock you underturn, everywhere you turn, it's like, oh, you're a Binance affiliate. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just, their CEO is brilliant and he you know the most popular site in crypto coin market cap he bought for i think i want to say man was it four hundred thousand? it was oh more than that what yeah, it four, had to be more yeah it was uh, maybe four hundred million probably was it a half a billion maybe but and and their technology got better because you know they got great dev, great tech. I mean, it's just so I, it's. I think when you look at a fifty billion market cap, it's probably warranted and it's probably undervalued still. That's probably shooting up to a hundred billion plus. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's the biggest uh, exchange there is, right? And they kind of own crypto. In a way, I mean, they they got well, they, yeah, they've expanded. They're not just a, a an exchange. No, They're they, a lot they have multiple that. exchanges. They got websites. They got <clears throat> wallets. Atomic that's... Wallet is one of the most popular wallets. Eh, it's owned by Binance. Uh, but know. this is all Chinese owned, right? Chinese is the China is kicking our ass. Period. Yeah. Period. It's it's so sickening to watch. Well, and we're going to talk about Neo later, and that's a that's a Chinese company as well. Right. So you want to get into that? Let's um, let's do. Unless you Neo. got a video to do. Yeah, let's do Neo, and then we'll get back to some news and some other stuff. Uh, okay. Okay. So Neo is this is this is a crash special here, people. I'm not yeah. huge on Neo. 
although I don't know a ton about it. What is it like? Well, Neo is considered the uh, Asian Ethereum. So they build out platforms. They, uh, uh, you know, people build out other coins on the Neo network. Based in uh, China, right? Yeah, based in China. Yeah, they were originally called Ant Shares. Right. Which I think is kind of ironic from a from a Chinese company. They were uh, <laughs> ants, you know. Well, I wonder if that had anything to do with Ant Financial. If they have some Ant Financial blood in them somewhere down the line. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure, but because that's uh, a massive. What's their financial. current price? Is forty seven ten. Um, you know, Ethereum's at 1800. Uh, you know, these guys have a lot of really good technology and, um, you know, they've been around longer than Ethereum. Uh, these are OGs, man. I mean, they go back to 14, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And beyond that, even they, they were developing before 2014, I think. So yeah, they have a circulating supply of, uh, 70 million. They're, Total supply right now is set to the same number, 70 million, but their max is 100 million. So they got a little bit of room, but uh, so forth. They're 3.3 billion on the market cap. Um, <clears throat> the thing that to me is that their all time high is uh, $195. And we're at one quarter of that right now. And yeah, yeah, it's not uh, even close to their all time yeah, high. Yeah, they got a lot going on. It's a lot. Uh, easier to uh, one of the big benefits of, of Neo versus Ethereum is that Ethereum has their own um, coding language. Right. Uh, it's called Solidity, mm -hmm. where Neo can use just about any coding language. So it's oh, a lot, lot easier for developers to to build on on Neo than it would be on Ethereum. Okay. And also it is proof of consensus. So which is it's yeah. it's a it's an off it's a kind of a derivative. It's it's like proof of proof of stake, but they use the Byzantine. It's mm. they're not tied to proof of work. So it's yeah. completely so it's different a, technology. Yeah. Yeah, so they don't have the uh, all the miners and all that stuff to deal with. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that kind of troubles me is how this ontology, which is part of it, ONT. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. What is that? That's used in the NEO system for um, ID verification, system upgrade, and governance. Mm. Okay. So when I say ID verification, um, the the ontology is very Orwellian in the fact that um, they can they can track I, the ID of virtually anybody and create. It's it's going to be used in social scores, so, um, social media scores, things like that. Have you ever seen that uh, that show on Netflix called Black Mirror? Sure. Yeah, I've watched a few. All right. Well, one of them is <clears throat> this this girl that uh, you know everybody's walking around with their phone, and every yeah, interaction yeah. they have is all tracked in the uh, uh, under their ID verification uh, uh, under their social score. Right. And she does. She makes some couple mistakes, and all of a sudden her social store score goes down, and people start defriending her, and she ends up in poverty. Yeah. And it, it, it's it's really. It's really a scary thought, but you know it's totally the way uh, China's going with their own social score. Yeah, they're they're already and, and they're not like this isn't years out. They actually oh they have it right now. Yeah, they have it. So to a degree, and it's just going to become more and more intrusive for those poor people. Yeah. So eventually, they're all going to grab their phones and throw them all in the river. <laughs> right, and then you go to jail. Yeah, you can't and then do that. walk directly to jail. Right. To the firing squad. So, well, yeah, Neo is, uh, it's an interesting, they get, they have a small amount of coins. Um, they also have, they have a gas fast. token, literally yep. symbol GAS. Yep. And yep. that one is, um, that one's like around four bucks, I think. 
That's correct. And if you hold Neo, you do get gas, right? A little bit? You know, I'm having problems on Exodus getting my gas, claiming my gas tokens. Hmm. Um, I, try to, I try to claim it, and it says you need a certain amount of gas to, uh, to claim it. Well, I don't have any, so I can't, I can't claim it because, and they don't have any instructions on how to buy a little bit of gas to put in your tank there to, so you can claim your, your gas tokens. So I'm a little annoyed with that right now, but I sent them an email, see what was going to happen. Well, they can give me some guidance. In in general, when you're dealing with the gas and stuff, it's a little bit tricky um, mm-hmm. Because sometimes I know V chains the, the same too with their veto a little bit. It's it seems better. It's a lot more transparent and stuff, and it seems more sophisticated and faster and a better rate and all that stuff. But um, yeah, and no, algo is yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say algo is interesting because it's just algo token. There's it's yeah. not a separate token. It pays every ten seconds, and it's uh it's actually just the token. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, another thing with uh, with Neo that I like is it's super fast. Um, is 10, it? 10,000 yeah. transactions per second. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that one, you guys, we're gonna, you know, these are just intros. You know, if you're interested, go to their website is neo dot org. Um, you were saying yeah, their Twitter's sure. pretty good as far as learning. Yeah, Neo crash. News. Neo News seems to be uh, Neo News today seems to be the uh, most up to date place for for news on on Neo. Yeah. So if you want to learn that, kind of a competitor to Ethereum, though, right? It seems like. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's. I'm fine as during. It's. It's tricky during these times, you guys, because um, the whole market's on fire. You're not going to find. I mean, there's there's some people, and no financial advice here. We don't do that. But um, there's people that during these times, they just look for the smallest, crappiest tokens they can find because they just get a huge boost no matter what they do. So yeah. Yeah, they load that's them a up. good way to get burned, too, right, Crash? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You got to be careful with it. It's it's just like yeah. any other investment. You want the highest quality stuff that you can get. So, <laughs> so I found some Ethereum today. What's up with that, huh? Yeah, I was on a I was on a private jet that had Wi-Fi, and I got my laptop out, and I'm bebopping around, and I'm trying to <laughs> uh, open a, a, a get my uh, MetaMask connected to uh, Pancake Swap. And okay. I opened it. I finally uh, locate my password and everything I need to get into the Mega Mask, and there's uh, 0.4 Ethereum in there. It's like, oh, cool. Bye, oh, bye, lunch today. So that was coming back from Zimbabwe, huh? Yeah, uh, Nigeria. Or Nigeria, got it. Yeah, but the uh, the cool thing is, well, you know. I open accounts all over the place because um, that's what I do is I research as many of these different um, platforms and, and wallets and things that I can. So I'm always, I got all kinds of them out there that I, that I did years ago that I kind of either forget about or don't pay any attention to anymore. But once in a while I open them up and there's a few, you know, a few tokens in there that back in 2016 were, 20 or 30 bucks and now they're worth thousands nicely crazy. done crazy lots of uh we were saying you know just lots of that happens in crypto it's complicated but and then you have the airdrops and stuff and it's mm, yeah really yeah a, quite a weird space as far as getting free stuff, you know? It's a, yeah, we were talking about airdrops earlier. Right. So let's get into an airdrop of an airdrop. Uh, so Flare Networks is coming out with, uh, with their token in May, it looks like, okay? And there's another company here. Hold on one second here. 
Okay, so let's have a quick listen of this uh, video from Flare Finance, this one is. Welcome back, Flare community. Breaking news. Flare Finance are beginning their public beta program this month. In a recent tweet from the official Flare Finance Twitter account, it has been revealed that the public beta test will begin on the 25th of February, 2021. This represents an opportunity to dip your feet into decentralized finance if you are yet to do so. I was fortunate to have been invited to the closed beta test and I can assure you, the applications that Flare Finance are building are mind blowing. Okay, so have a listen to that video. Don't forget you guys, we're dropping these videos will be linked. We got a few. It'll be one to three link probably to each video. Listen to those videos if you want to learn stuff. Um, we're not dropping them just to drop a video. It's uh, it's it, you're gonna learn a lot. These are always you know experts or key companies that are doing this. So, Flare Finance is interesting. Um, they are. So it's it's an airdrop on top of the flare networks airdrop so once once my understanding is once the airdrop from flare networks drops then you get a drop from these guys and these guys seem like they're almost ahead of flare networks but i don't know uh it was really interesting just that uh that that song with all the uh um <laughs> media plan right. if you like th there was a whole bunch of subliminal messages in that thing yeah and they yeah. weren't all ne they weren't as negative as you might think there was uh um some pretty powerful um positive messages in there um so yeah. if you're interested in that type of stuff take a take a a close and uh close look at that uh Actually, give me one more second with this. I want to see what this says. So what is the beta program? Right. Well, the public beta program will be a showcase of three of the six products developed by Flare Finance, a group of developers completely separate from Flare Network Limited. They will display the power of the Flare Network using three of their upcoming products. Flare X, their decentralized exchange. Flare Farm, their yield farming product. And Flare Wrap, their stablecoin issuance system. Okay, so yeah, I, I wanted you guys to, to hear that, but uh, it's <clears throat> DeFi is so huge that it's, it's there i don't think there's going to be like a winner take all there's probably going to be i don't know one to three mammoth players and then a bunch of smaller players um yeah and these big play these these big guys they're going to be doing everything they, it, it, it's it, they're watching binance how they got you know they have their exchange they have uh yield farming they got all these different things and they're all they're all going to be doing the same thing Right. That's what Neo Neo came out with their new business plan, and it, it they're going to try to be one coin for everything. Now, does Neo have a Dex? I bet they probably do, right? Uh, yeah, they're they're in the process of adding one. 
What's interesting about, remember that little Dex play that we got tangled up in Crash? <laughs> Do you um, remember that song? Which one was that? When I met you, the very first one that Amy hooked us up with through, oh. through our friend. Do you remember that? That was a Dax play. So, anyways, WB? What was it? What? W, WB? Was it Wealthbot or what was it? I don't remember. No, it wasn't Wealthbot. It was that other exchange where it ended up being a complete scam. We, we, oh, one, one, one coin. But we ended up actually one of the rare. It was. Oh, a, it, no, there was one, yeah, that, that came from. Uh, uh, it was the guy a guy. Running, the guy running, I'm not going to say his name, the guy running for governor. Yes. And it was a guy, <laughs> and it was a, the, the CEO was a guy out of Canada, and it was a, it was a scam. It was a total scam. We knew the risk, and we didn't put a ton into it. But one of the rare scams where you actually got like half your money back. That is so rare. Yeah. These yeah. scams, you never get a dime back. You know, these guys, yeah. though, they actually paid half back and the guy ran. But <clears throat> just getting back to Dex's, my point is it seems like the first thing a DeFi play does, it's kind of like the base of it is pop up a Dex, you know, and these DEXs, DEXs decentralized exchanges, right? For mm -hmm. the for the audience. And what they are is they're unregulated exchanges, you know, and there's it's it's interesting because the regulation is they're just we're we're giving the regulators the crypto space is giving the regulators fits and at the, the heart of all regulation is regulating the exchanges. And there's DEXs popping up everywhere. And I don't think there's anything they can do about it. No, because they're all out of their jurisdiction. It's, yeah. uh, that's why they're, they're they're letting it run rampant. There's going to be all kinds of fraud. And then they're going to come in and swoop in and say, we need global governance of finance. Yeah, because because these DEXs, they're not even the, the whole idea of decentralized. They're everywhere. You can't really you can't really put them in a jurisdiction. Cause they're everywhere. Yeah. They're decentralized. Yeah. 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 There's, you know, they, they have a home base maybe, but where they operate out of, but they're, they're global. All of them. Yeah. McAfee was coming out with one too. Wasn't he? Uh, I'm not I'm sure. Pretty, uh, he was, I don't know. I use, I use uh, uh, decentralized exchanges from around the world. Yeah. Anyways, and there's no KYC, you know? Right, yeah, it's a, it's a. I have not used one yet. They're fascinating to me, though, and I wanna, I wanna check one out at some point. <clears throat> I like that X markets. I mean, even Ripple has on the Ripple Ledger. There's a Dex, so mm -hmm. and and they're totally in with the regulators. So I just wonder if exchanges. I mean, I remember from my old world, it was such a big deal to just even do electronic trading, mm -hmm. and now, like twenty years later, you have. You have these DEXs that it's just, they, they pop these up. You have access. Like on Bitcher, you have access to an exchange. Just not even have an account. Just go to the site. Boom, you can go right into the exchange and look at everything. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. What a world. It's, very, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's financial freedom, you know, but buyer beware at the same time. True. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you want the freedom. Okay, you can lose your shirt, too. And that's where, you know, you got to be super careful. So anyways, um, so one other thing here. Okay, so this is actually another video on the Flare Network now. This is not Flare Finance. This is Flare Network. And, you know, what part, this kind of is an example of why we get videos and kind of show you guys some videos because there's just so many smart people and great content out there that you guys should listen to and learn from. And they're going to be better than us. I mean, I'm not afraid to say we sucked at defining NFTs. <laughs> so... Here's, here's just a little kind of a supplemental explanation. It'll make it kind of clear and kind of ties into Flare Networks. And Gala Games is kind of leading the way with this. It's kind of interesting. But anyways, here we go. Today, we are going to be discussing non-fungible tokens and Flare Networks' latest partnership with Gala Games. Before we talk about this partnership, we first need to understand what NFTs actually are 
and how Gala Games are using them to give value back to their gamers. So what are NFTs? NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, are digital assets which represent a wide range of unique items, from collectible sports cards to virtual game assets like weapons or costumes. One of the main benefits of owning a digital collectible versus a physical collectible, like a rare minted coin for example, is that each NFT contains distinguishing information that makes it distinct from any other NFT, which makes it easily verifiable. This makes the creation and circulation of fake collectibles pointless because each item can be tracked back to the original issuer. Unlike regular cryptocurrencies, NFTs cannot be directly exchanged with one another. This is because no two NFTs are identical. You can think of non-fungible tokens as passports used to travel. Each passport contains specific information, including the owner's name, age and nationality. This data makes it impossible for passports to be traded with one another, even though they are the same item. Non-fungible tokens are indivisible. They cannot be divided into smaller denominations like Bitcoin Satoshis or XRP into drops, for example. They exist exclusively as a whole item. NFTs are also verifiable. Another benefit of storing historical ownership data on the blockchain is that items such as digital artwork can be tracked back to the original creator which allows pieces to be authenticated without the help of a third party. Flair Finance created a number of different non-fungible tokens to reward their mer- Alright, so that's just a little more thorough, I think, definition of nfts so you guys understand what they are and uh they're gonna have an impact they're gonna have a high impact on society i think as a whole as we move forward with crypto yeah just because they're you know they're used for you know gaming and and collectibles and and stuff like that right now but they're going to be able to be used for anything that's tangible right yeah it's going to be interesting that is going to be that's going to be big so Oh. And uh, and then, of course, swapping these around, that's where you get into the payments and the DeFi and all that stuff. So it's just an unbelievable market that we are entering into. And it's just it's still so early. But I think there's a little bit of an urgency to just introduce you guys to a lot of different coins and and stuff within all this stuff so that you can kind of see what's going on anyways uh so that's that oh i wanted to just regroup real quick on this uh scam that happened because i think it's worth your while so one second here all right, here we go. Actually been fished, and by that time, it was actually too late. So that's the entire story of actually how I got fished. They made like, they have an official looking site, and I should have honestly looked at the URL, but I was actually in a hurry then. So it was like Atomic Mame all this live is obviously a fake URL. Like, unless it's like, you know, the actual official Atomic Wallet site, um, obviously don't do anything there, and definitely don't type in your uh, seed. And the other thing is like, Atomic Wallet support should never ask for your password or your seed because they can't really fix anything with this. Remember, uh, Atomic is just an interface. Your actual funds are on the blockchain. So if you actually check your blockchain address and the funds are there, that means like the interface is messing up, but you can actually use your own private key to access your funds always. So you don't actually need support and you haven't actually lost your funds um, in that case. So that's how I actually lost. That's how I uh, ended up giving out my tw uh, 12 word so real quick in the beginning he says and again you guys should listen to this whole video because it's worth your time but in the beginning he says someone actually went into his stream on youtube and was mm. like saying oh you should maybe because he shared some of his stuff with like kin token i think 
And yep. they're like, oh, maybe you should fix this. And that's how he got kind of roped in. Was actually he he's thinking it was one of these people in his YouTube stream. Yeah, Monic, because uh, I just wasn't paying attention too much. I wasn't paying attention enough, and that's completely my fault, unfortunately. I did come co contact Atomic Wallet Support. Obviously, they can't give me my funds back, but they haven't really responded. I just want them to actually check their own threads when people tweet at them to make sure like scam support doesn't actually get to answer the questions. These scam supports after they scam like after they scam me, they did delete the account. Um, and create another scam account and I just showed you a possible list of all of those scam accounts But know that this site is actually a scam site atomic main wallets live and the thing is like if you see another site like this um, You got to check the URL before you do anything contact anyone and never give your password or seed regardless of what kind of technical support you are actually or how much busy how much of a hurry you're in always check your actual addresses even if it doesn't show up on Atomic, if the funds uh, show up on your, uh, if the funds actually show up at your address and you have your private key, you can, uh, which Atomic actually does have, you can always access your funds with your private key. I actually used uh, the, the official Solana wallet, and uh, I used that to actually basically get my Ken funds afterwards. So I still have my Ken because I was actually able to withdraw the Ken into another address that actually supported Solana. I'm not going to tell people how to do that because that's actually like, unless we have a ledger, that's actually an unsafe option, but I was right there on my computer. So I just, um, I basically just transferred it to one of the web wallets. So that's how I got fished. Hope this, um, information was, uh, I hope this information was, anyways, um, yeah, what's well, uh, the, the the meat of the story is don't ever give up your key phrase or what else do they call that? Your seed words. Our seed words, yeah. yeah. They, different people use different terminology depending on right. what wallets you're using and things like that. Um, <clears throat> and if you got questions or you you know you want to go to the official website, I always bookmark all the official websites and uh, go directly to their support email address. Yup, and um, yeah, on Skirts, you can actually go into uh, the crypto custody. We'll give you all the wallets and like the Atomic wallet, that's the official Atomic site. So you can either type in Atomic Wallet or you can just click on this and you'll go always to the official site. The scam sites are just amazing. Look, I mean, look at how accurate they are. They just look exactly like the regular sites. They're, it's stunning, <laughs> really, how sophisticated Oh, yeah, they just scams copy are. and paste them, you know? Yeah. And these scams, I mean, they're not going away. They're getting more sophisticated. you got to be really careful because if you think about it, it's – it's really kind of the most lucrative type of scam you can do because it's like you're robbing a bank. It's instant money. It moves instantly. I mean, even when you rob a bank, you know, you'd think you got a, I don't know, you got the red dye stuff that sprays out or you got to launder the money or whatever. This stuff's just like instant cash, take it and go. So these things Take it, transfer it to wherever you want, spread it out. Yeah, it's just yeah, like... Yeah, I don't think they're going away. All, you know? all at your laptop at the coffee shop, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's nuts, man. So be careful out there, people. Again, I just want to... He was... And it's got to be humbling for him, too. I, I, I dropped a comment to him and just said thanks for uh, sharing and stuff because... That's really cool, and it's great info for you guys. So, mm -hmm. um, cryptocurrency news, I think, is his channel. Give him a like and subscribe. I know his name's Bob, and uh, you know it's it's cool that he's sharing. I think he's even got. <clears throat> yeah, he didn't have to share that. It's, I'm sure that's kind of embarrassing for him, but he he was pretty humble about it. And but it's the best way to learn is making mistakes. So that's pretty cool that we can all learn from that mistake. So I thought it was neat that he was sharing it. Yeah, I've, I've lost uh, 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 seed phrases and key phrases and things like that with uh, and haven't been able to recover crypto. So It's tricky it, stuff. And I think, you know, big picture, I think people are going to be running to the banks with this stuff. I think banks are going to love the different crypto fees and they're going to make a ton of money off crypto because it's out of your hands then, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's also out of your hands. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've, uh, <clears throat> and I'm sure you do the same thing. I, I've certainly revised and improved my whole uh, security and passcode and all that stuff uh, management. Yeah, it's. Uh, I got a little one. I'll introduce you guys to. I'm researching. It's all about that. Um, it's kind of an interesting little crypto we'll talk about down the road, maybe. But uh, so that's it for the videos. My question today, Crash, I don't know yeah. if you've thought about this at all, but so here's the yields, right? And the 10 year, we're looking at bonds here. The 10 year yield continues to go up, right? So bonds are falling, people are exiting the bond market. The dollar is kind of holding steady, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that think, you know, there's going to be this massive bond crash, which would lead to a stock crash, which would lead to a crypto crash. And I'm just wondering if bondholders aren't starting to move into crypto. You know, why, 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 why do you, do you think, think that the, the yields, yields are going, going up? up? Well, the 10 year is, well, because the bonds are being sold. That's why there's a bond sell off. Now, it's not intense right now, but it's there. And um, I follow Greg Manorino. If you guys ever get a chance, I don't think we've put any of his videos up. We will at some point, but <clears throat> super smart. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a really, he's more of a trader, you know, but it's, it, it, Basically, people experience, you basically follow the 10-year. I mean, that is the, the, that's the benchmark that you follow as far as what bonds are doing. Because the markets are really run by bonds. It's a way people mm -hmm. look at stocks, but really bonds are much more telling. It's a much more bigger market. And if there's ever a massive bond correction, it'll take down the financial system, period. It's done. You yeah. Know? And so... Bonds are, you know, they're slowly selling off. And I'm just wondering, you're seeing this massive inflow into this, into uh, crypto. And it's like, is some of that bond money? You know, I'm just wondering, is some of that bond money? Because uh, now you got uh, defined. Some of it's too. coming from everywhere. I, I right. I think it is. But I think direct, I'm starting to wonder directly, is there with DeFi? <clears throat> DeFi basically is all this bond stuff. It's treasuries. It's derivatives. It's it's all the bonds. I mean, everything is going to be tokenized. So mm. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, are we going to see, rather than just a flip of the switch, okay, bonds are now tokenized. Maybe we will get that at some point. But yeah, yeah. it's... I absolutely yeah. see dollars coming out of the stock markets into crypto. I, I see it on a personal level uh, from from people I know. They're liquidating portions of their, uh, you know, they look at the stock market has had what ten years of uh, of positive numbers or something yeah. like that, or is it more than that? Yeah, and you're gonna see some of that now. <clears throat> Once we have ETFs and stuff, and and you know RIAs that are gonna be putting people into crypto, you're gonna see a lot more on the equity side. But the bond side, that's where the players are, man. You can oh, put it. Yeah. I mean, you, you Yeah, but what's a yield of 1.3%? That's that's ridiculous. Right, for the 10-year. Yeah. Well, yields, and they've been going down for decades. They've yeah. been, and now they're really base. Nominally, they're negative, and they're going to continue to be. I mean, that's... I mean, look, I at, the, look a, at the Japanese 10-year. It's 0.1%. Right, and they're negative. I mean, they're negative. Look at yeah. look at the the German bond. I mean, it's it's negative point three. It's we are going in. The U.S. is the Fed's holding it up, but mm -hmm. we're negative. And as long as they prop it up, that's okay. But I just think, I think the crypto market. This is not like the last bull run. It's nothing like it, and it's starting to come out. Some mm -hmm. some. People that are really big into crypto, some are still saying, oh, crypto winter's coming. No way, man. There's trillions coming into this market, and it's <clears> on <throat> its way. It's on its way. It's so. going to be a it's going to be a ten a ten year bull market. It's going to have its <clears throat> it's going to have uh, you know its corrections, but you're going to have wicked it's pullbacks. Gonna and it's going to take ten years for all for the dollars to transfer 
right uh, where they're going to settle over oh, the next yeah, 50 for sure yeah and then they'll tokenize everything and everything's going to be in crypto but you're going to see these wicked pullbacks and it's going to be people are just going to be jumping in hey it's a pullback get in because that's all that's going to be your only chance it's like look at bitcoin lately you know oh it went it went down to 48 50 there was your chance you know and we got every i mean i am stunned at how they are pumping bitcoin now i mean you know tika tuari right we've talked about him oh He's yeah, out there. yeah, yeah follow him. I, I saw an ad with him and i just watched it to see how much he's gonna pump and he's just he's just flat out saying buy bitcoin now buy yeah. it now i mean this is a 45 minute infomercial on buying bitcoin and you know what that now. tells me they're already in they're already oh, in, man. Yeah. They're already right now. As you're looking at Bitcoin, they're gobbling up the alts. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. They're not going to say a word about it until well, they're in, which will be years. Well, you know. So well, it's just mind blowing what's going on with this stuff. Yeah, they're probably, probably in smoke filled filled rooms flipping coins to see who who's going to announce they bought Bitcoin next. Oh man, I lost. Okay, I'll announce it next week. And some of them are starting to come out now. So here's uh, here's Gene Simmons that just came out, right? <laughs> yeah. And what did he do? He's not talking about Bitcoin, though, is he? Uh, he's he's, he's talk talking about, about, hey, I just bought 300 grand of ADA. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, this is, this is uh, hot off the press today. And uh -huh. uh, I'm telling you, the smart money's already moving into that because... You know, Bitcoin, maybe it does go to a million. Okay, great. But it's always going to be, it's going to be a great investment. But I mean, if you want to yeah. make a killing, you know, you're going to have to play in the, in the little bit murkier waters. Yeah. And, and they have, I mean, it's, you got to find use case people. That's what you got to do. And that's kind of what bugs you about Neo a little bit is not that it doesn't have a use case, but we would just want to be everything to everyone. Mm -hmm. good luck because right away here you go we're tangling with with ada that's just specifically smart contracts we're going after ethereum i mean they're going hard man mm -hmm. yeah they, now ada are they technically a u.s company uh boy that's a good question i i mean hoskinson's is isn't he uh, I, don't I don't know. They're close, though. We got to have something that's not Asian, people, or we're done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um, what else for news, Crash? What do you got? Uh, well, there was a couple things that were jumping out at me. I got one other thing I oh, wanted that I saw Ra was... Um, Raul Paul. What about him? He says that Bitcoin is the only life raft to escape poverty trap. Yeah. It, man, I, he is someone that, you know, here's a guy from Goldman Sachs, right? And I just started following him. I like him, man. He, I do, too. I, he, he, I get a good feeling from him. That, you yeah, know, he's, he's good, smart. He's really a good person. I think he's smart, but he's, I think he's a good person. Yeah, I do, too. I like how he does his uh, a lot of his spots from his place in like uh, I think it's Cancun. Yeah, in his kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his kitchen. But I saw his first video. It was with Pomp, and at that point he was all gold. He was just starting to look at Bitcoin, yeah. and man, has he ever flipped? He is just uh -huh. he's all Bitcoin, and and he's a smart, connected dude. You know, uh, yeah, and you so, know another one I see is that uh, uh, financial advisory giant uh, Motley Fool is investing five million dollars in Bitcoin. So there's so many stock people that listen to and, and pay attention to Motley Fool. That the fact that they're they're investing five million dollars just gave it another huge, huge acceptability to a, a, a brand new group of people that are going to be like, Oh, right. Maybe this is real. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, the other big one that's, 
the other big one that stood out to me was um, a, a few days ago. It was since our last video, I think, but it was BlackRock. Yeah. I mean, you don't get any bigger than BlackRock or bigger connected. They basically run the Fed. They work with the Fed for all the stuff that the Fed does. So, mm-hmm. and, and that was when I think we said, you know, they came out and said we're starting to dabble in Bitcoin. Well, we know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're considering it. Yeah. I mean, that means they were in a month ago. <laughs> exactly. Time to drive the price up, boys. Let's say we're considering it. Yeah, and let's get into the alts before we talk about it, you know. There's just, there's just no way that some of these alts that are doing such important things, they're mm-hmm. not. I mean, you're starting to see it with Ethereum. You got that coming out, but... Anywho, well, we got to wrap this up, man. What do you got a plan to catch? No, I'm laying low this weekend. Are you? Yeah, Good. Trixie's flying in, and we're going to... Hit some festivals and stuff. Good deal, man. Yeah. Go incognito. Nice. Okay. Well, people, drop a comment. Drop a like and subscribe. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for listening, listening, everybody. I hope you gathered something from, from our comments here. Crash, I was thinking real quick before we go. Yeah. Just give this some thought. I was thinking... If should we should maybe have a sale on subscriptions, so we get more subs, what do you think? Huh. I mean, I'd donate, I'd donate some. some I'd donate, donate something, something to, towards, towards that, that uh, effort. Just so like, like so so, so, so for every uh, so, uh, so many number, number of subscriptions we get, we, we choose, choose we we uh, pull one out of the hat and send them. Uh, a thousand crow coin or something? I'm just saying for now, let's just make them free. Make the, the YouTube subs free. Just do it. Uh, oh, so they don't have to pay anything to be a, to subscribe? Yeah, just, you know, let's do it. Let's do it today, man. Let's start now. All right, All right turn it off so it's free. All right, people, you're in. You're in for free. So And drop a comment if you get in, and uh, we will talk to you on the next one. Over and out. Crash. What up? Hey. You never asked me about the Litecoin. Airdrop. I told you three times. Three times I, I, I set you up. Okay. Did I'm you? I'm waiting, Eddie. I'm sorry. I went on a rampage. I couldn't stop. <laughs> what about Litecoin? What's the deal that? Well, there really isn't one. We we had talked about it before. They, you know, they announced there is going to be a airdrop of Spark tokens to Litecoin, um, but they have not announced anything since January on when that might be. Okay, but there's definitely going to be an airdrop. Yep. So hang on to your Litecoin. Cool. Wish I had some. I got a Litecoin wallet, though. It's really nice. Oh. (laughs) Not that again. So, well, cut me off next time, man. Jump in, dude. I mean, you You cut me off off the mic constantly. How come you don't do it on the mic? Because I'm polite. Oh, okay. My mother taught me well.